Now that I'm back home, it seems like it was all just a dream, but I've got the pictures to prove it. Last week, I was invited to the White House for the first social media summit, where we talked about all the censorship that us conservatives are experiencing online and what can be done about it. Here's a small little sample of what happened inside. So this is a historic day. Never before have so many online journalists and influencers come together in this building to discuss the future of social media. Each of you is fulfilling a vital role in our nation. You're challenging the media gatekeepers and the corporate censors to bring the facts straight to the American people. Together, you reach more people than any television broadcast network by far. Free speech is a bedrock of American life. Our constitutional rights must be fiercely protected. And today, I'm directing my administration to explore all regulatory and legislative solutions to protect free speech and the free speech rights of all Americans. We hope to see transparency, more accountability, and more freedom. I learned you know, just traveling all over the country during the midterms. This is a top three issue with the conservative base, but many of our leaders don't even recognize it as a problem. So what I love seeing guys like Kevin, yeah. guys like Josh, leaders actually stepping up and recognizing it because our own leadership is missing the boat on this one and have been for a long time. That's right. It's happened to all of us. That's how I got into this fight two years ago because they were doing it to me. Uh, so I just wanted to thank everyone in the room for being out there, for doing the same thing, for risking it, because again, there's consequences to being a conservative, not so much on the other side. I was fortunate enough to be able to speak to the president about the issues that us YouTubers are experiencing, and while I won't reveal everything that happened inside, let me just say that the administration and Republican members of Congress aren't happy about it. I don't have video of it because they kicked the media out and cut the feed during the Q&A portion so that it would be a private discussion, but that's me talking to the president. The liberal media was not very happy that a bunch of cool people got invited to the White House and, of course, couldn't even get their facts straight. CNN mixed up the photo of Charlie Kirk, the founder of Turning Point USA, and another individual. They also labeled Carpe Donctum, the greatest meme maker of our age, who has been retweeted by President Trump a half a dozen times, a, quote, anonymous troll. And despite his picture being widely available on the internet, including on his own Twitter account, they just couldn't find one. MSNBC reported that President Trump hosted a group of <laughs> conspiracy theorists at the White House for what was dubbed a social media summit. That's fake news, MSNBC, because you and CNN weren't invited. These folks really, like, they're marginal figures in many ways, yeah. but they were actually quite central to the ways in which vectors of disinformation and memes and attacks on Hillary Clinton and other people seeded into the public consciousness in 2016. Yeah, I talked to a bunch of disinformation researchers about this meeting and seeing the names that were walking through that door today. And they said, these are the same people there at the, the very center of these network graphs. You see like the center of the node and then these, then it explodes out with all these other smaller accounts, right? In the public sphere, you may not know their names, but you definitely know the smears that they pushed out. Hours beforehand, the Southern Poverty Law Center called the meeting a gathering of groups and individuals who have no business at the White House, saying the invite list included conspiracy theorists and... Why are you having a bunch of people who are at the very least deeply controversial to the White House in the first place? Like There are a bunch of people who are at the White House in this particular group of folks who were basically, I mean, have been involved in conspiracy theorizing. He's bringing a bunch of people who ought not be at the White House to the White House. It's, it's dumb and, and frankly, it's wrong. Even Jimmy Kimmel complained about it. He, he held what he called a social media summit at the White House today. So he invited a group of people that included conspiracy theorists, internet trolls, all the worst pe people who like their own posts, all the worst people on the internet. After the social media summit, the president invited us all out to the Rose Garden where he addressed the nation about the upcoming census and the controversy over whether or not the government should be allowed to ask whether or not someone is a citizen of the United States or not. Not only did the president bring us into the Rose Garden for the address, but he kicked the mainstream media reporters out of the seats and gave them to us! <laughs> <laughs> oh, super, super. What's up guys? Mark Dice here in the Rose Garden at the White House. Can't believe it. Got a bunch of fake news back there, freaking out. Got Carpe Donctum. Carpe Donctum, the greatest meme maker of our time. Right there. Oh yeah. Brandon Tatum. 
We've got Fleckus Talks up here in a suit. In a suit. James O'Keefe dealing some business. Can't wait to see CNN freak out and find out that I'm here. <laughs> This reporter named Brian Kareem wasn't happy that we replaced the fake news. So as soon as the president left, he said that we were all prone to demonic possession, which upset Sebastian Gorka, who was one of the guests. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. No, I'm just standing alone. This is a group of people that are eager for demonic possession. Demonic possession. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a journalist, right? That's right. Hey, like, come this on over here and talk to me, brother. We can go outside and have a long conversation. You're threatening me now in the White House. I'm going to get him. You're threatening me in the Rose Garden. Get him. Get him. You are a punk. You're not a journalist. You're a punk. Go home. Go home. Go home. Hey, Gorka, get a job. Hey, just for the record, he'd kick your- The fake news then reported that Trump's social media summit nearly descended into a brawl in the Rose Garden and blamed Sebastian Gorka. They also said that, quote, another attendee of the social media summit, Mark Dice, a right-wing pundit, also shouted at CNN's Jim Acosta as he walked by the press corps. Vox, not Fox, Vox with a V, then reported that I verbally harassed Jim Acosta and shouted at him and ridiculed the fact that his book only spent two weeks on the bestsellers list. First of all, I wasn't shouting at him, I was talking to him, and second of all, I didn't mention anything about his book falling off the bestseller list after two weeks. It was two days! <laughs> Hey Jim, how come your book didn't make it above the top 50 on Amazon's bestseller list? It was a New York Times bestseller. List. Well, that's an honorary title, of course. It Wall fell Street, off the Wall Street Amazon Journal bestseller. It and fell off the, the Amazon USA Today bestseller was also a bestseller in Canada. It fell off the Amazon it top one. Yourself. It fell off the Amazon top 100 list after two days. So. How does it feel to live in your mother's basement? Actually, I, I, I make my videos in my kitchen, which get about a third of the views of your mainstream shows. Your mother's kitchen. It's that's my kitchen. That, that's fun, Jim. Let's be respectful. All right. This is the White House. Night. Oh, I will. Have a, have a nice your life. Mother's basement. No, it's my kitchen, Jim. Okay. Yeah. Your where, where I get a third of the viewers of Anderson gotcha. Cooper, and I'm just a guy on a laptop. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sure. And when I stopped recording and put my phone back in my pocket and started walking away, he then said something like, good luck with your book. And we had a little back and forth. And so I pulled my phone back out and started recording and caught the tail end of that conversation. Well, I sent you a copy, actually, Sir, at CNN. I didn't. This is not the time yeah. or the place. I think that went into file 13. Hey, any, any resemblance to you on the cover is, is strictly a coincidence and unintentional. Say hi to your mom for me. You got a great writer, Jim. You're coming up with some real great ones. I met a lot of cool people, including Carpe Donctum, James O'Keefe, David Harris Jr., Brandon Tatum, and many others. But I do have one regret. I was just too well behaved. I really should have let Jim Acosta have it. But I was a guest at the White House, so I thought I would behave myself. But God is great. And the next day, when I was hanging out outside of the White House with my new friends, guess who came walking on by? Jim Acosta! Here's just a small sample of that video, but you'll have to check back tomorrow to see the whole thing. And All this right. just shows you how arrogant you are about the, the new social Art. media technology. It would be great if you could find a, you know, a, a gainful career besides what you're Writing doing Writing best-selling right books like, and you're, becoming a top YouTuber you're, and you know, you're just being a social influencer, street, I mean, supporting the president, debunking life, fake news from the Clown News Network. Down for yourself, it right? is That's fantastic. Saying, you know. I'm living the dream, Jim. Yeah. It's amazing. God has blessed me yeah, with so well, much. This is a divine it. appointment, Jim. Yeah. Well, it's, it's great to hear. You know, you're a hell of an American and uh, it's, it seems like what you're doing out here is making I, a real difference. So. Oh, thank you so I much. It really that. is. I feel that every day. Fellow YouTubers David Harris Jr. and Brandon Tatum were with me and can confirm that as soon as I stopped recording and put my phone back in my pocket, Jim Acosta shouted at me as loud as he could for me to F off right in front of the tourists, including families with children who were hanging out in front of the White House. You'll see in tomorrow's video that I even extended a handshake to Jim Acosta as we parted ways because... Quite frankly, I feel sorry for him, but he just wasn't having it. As the sort of YouTube ambassador at the White House Social Media Summit, I'm confident that I represented us well. And this wasn't just for show. This is the beginning of something very big. And a big thanks to all of you guys for helping make my channel great over the years because I wasn't just there for me, I was there for you. And hope I made you proud.
Subscribe to my channel if you're new here and check back tomorrow for the full interview with Jim Acosta. Well, I guess that is if YouTube doesn't take it down by the time you get around to trying to find it because they'll probably just claim that I was bullying the poor guy.